Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, I want to talk about something that confuses a lot of algebra students. So if you are taking any sort of algebra course, especially like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, you definitely want to pay attention. But uh, what's going on here? Well, we have this equation right here, x plus 3 is equal to 4, and we're multiplying both sides of that equation by x. So the question is, what happens when we do that? Okay, so we're multiplying, again, both sides of this equation by x. So we're going to have this new equation that we're going to try to solve that new equation. What happens? What's going on here when we do that? Well, again, this is a very, very important algebra topic that a lot of students don't quite understand, and you need to understand it. So if you think you know what I'm talking about, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I want to fully explain this in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video is exciting and helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so, uh, you know, right here, when we look at this basic equation, you know, hopefully you're like, well, this is super easy. Why would I even want to multiply both sides of the equation by x? Well, again, I'm going to explain this in one second, but the question is, what happens? Okay, well, let's take a look at the answer. The answer is you could introduce extraneous uh, solutions or extraneous roots. Now, if you've never heard of extraneous solutions, well, it is something that you absolutely need to be familiar with. Okay, so in this particular equation, it wouldn't be necessary to multiply both sides of the uh, equation by x, but I'm going to use this basic equation here to uh, kind of make my point. Okay, but for those of you out there are that actually got this right, now this is kind of a confusing question, and maybe you kind of guessed something else that's maybe even correct. But for those of you that are saying maybe you're talking about extraneous solutions, well, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars um, as you are clearly an astute algebra student. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this here. So let's take a look at this um, kind of basic equation, x plus 3 is equal to 4. Okay, before we uh, multiply both sides of the equation by x, we're just going to take a look at this equation first. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We've got x plus 3 is equal to 4. If I wanted to solve this equation, this is what we call a linear equation. So this is super easy. All we need to do is literally subtract both sides of the equation by 3. So the solution is x is equal to 1. Now, I, I would know if that, in fact, this is the correct solution. Because if I replace this x with 1, what would I have here? Well, I would have 1 plus 3, right? 1 plus 3. This is, in fact, 4. And 4 is equal to 4. So that checks. So this is a valid solution. Okay, so in this particular uh, solution, there is only one and only one uh, correct answer. Okay, so there's not multiple solutions. There's only one, which, of course, is x is equal to 1. Okay, so no problem there. Let's go ahead and take that same equation, all right, this equation that we're looking at, uh, x plus 3 is equal to 4. And let's do something interesting to it. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Now, 2 is a number. Okay, It's not a variable. So this is a distinction to uh, what I'm going to be talking about here in just one second, what happens when we multiply both sides by x. Okay, so let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And when we do this, we're going to end up with 2 times. Let me actually write this like this so some of you uh, can see this a little better. So this is 2 times x plus 3. Uh, so to uh, kind of simplify this, we just simply use the distributive property. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. And when I solve this equation right here, first I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to get 2x is equal to 2. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. And I get x is equal to 1. Okay, which of course we knew uh, was the solution to this equation, all right? So when we multiply both sides of the equation by a number, okay, well, it really didn't, you know, change the final solution, all right? So you can always uh, multiply both sides of the equation by a number or divide both sides of the equation by a number or add or subtract both sides of the equation uh, by a number, 
and you're not going to break the equation. You're going to always end back up uh, with the, you know, whatever solution you had before you did that. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So you're, if you're saying, okay, uh, no problem. I get what you're saying, Mr. YouTube math man, please continue. Well, I'm going to continue right now. So now this is what we wanted to discuss. So here is our lovely equation. X plus three is equal to four. And I know that the solution to this equation is X is equal to one. Now let's suppose I wanted to um, uh, multiply both sides of the equation by X. So what we want to kind of ask ourselves, is this going to have the same property? Are we going to end back with um, our answer, which we know is the correct answer, correct solution here, X is equal to one. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by X. So I'm gonna use the distributive property. It's gonna be X times X is X squared. X times three is three X, four times X is four X. So what I have here now is I kind of created a quadratic equation. So when I multiply both sides by X, I end up with a quadratic equation. Now the thing about a quadratic equations, which is a polynomial of degree two, they always have two solutions, okay? But if I think about this, I'm like, wait, hold on here. Uh, I only have one solution, but this equation has two, uh, two solutions. Yes, indeed. Let's go ahead and continue on here and solve this quadratic equation. So what you wanna do in this uh, particular uh, situation is set this equation equal to zero. So I would subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. So the result of doing that is x squared minus x is equal to zero. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing right here, um, this is just basic, you know, uh, algebra solving quadratic equations. Any of the, uh, this math that I'm doing that you need help on, definitely check out like my Algebra 1 course. That's probably the best course for those of you out there. Uh, where you really kind of get introduced to extraneous uh, solutions. Uh, of course, um, you know, it's applied in all algebra courses, algebra two, uh, pre-calculus, et cetera. Okay, so now we have x squared minus uh, x is equal to zero. So how do we solve this equation right here? Well, in this particular equation, we would want to factor out an x. Okay, so x times x minus one. Now, if I multiply this x uh, back in, so I have x times x, that gives me x squared. x times this one would give me x. So all we're doing here is factoring, uh, and that's what you would want to do, okay? So now I have this factor, x times x minus 1, is equal to 0. So I have two things being multiplied together, and the answer is 0. If I said, hey, I have two numbers, I multiply them together, what's the, uh, and the answer is 0, what is the value of one of those numbers or both of those numbers? The only way you can get 0 as the product, okay, of two different numbers uh, is one or both have to be zero, okay, these factors, right? So that's what we do. We set each of these factors, x equal to zero. So x is equal to zero, and x minus one is equal to zero, and then we solve for x. So in this situation, we have x is equal to zero, okay? And in this situation, when I solve for x, I get x is equal to one, and this should look familiar to you, okay? But this is something different. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these solutions and check these solutions. So we're like, okay, um, I have two answers, x is equal to zero and x is equal to one. So let's plug in x is equal to zero right here. Okay, so well, if that's the case, I would end up with zero plus three. And is that equal to four? Well, three is not equal to four. So zero, okay, is not a valid solution. Okay, this is what we call an extraneous solution. And the whole point here is that when you multiply both sides of an equation by a variable or variable expression, you can introduce extraneous uh, uh, solutions. Now, you'll never know uh, if, in fact, you have created an extraneous solution uh, with that process. You have to check all your um, uh, solutions. Now, of course, when I check x is equal to 1, I'm um, like, all right, let me check x is equal to 1. In this case, it's going to be 1 plus 3. Is that equal to 4? Yep, 4 is equal to 4. So that is a good solution. Now, this comes up um, really um, when you're talking about like solving rational uh, equations. Uh, you'll definitely know um, in those particular algebra topics when your teacher or your textbook is telling you check for uh, extraneous solutions. It's not an optional thing, but I want to kind of really convince you that indeed you will 
um, likely, you know, oftentimes create these extraneous solutions. So in algebra, you simply just can't multiply both sides by a variable or variable expression without possibly introducing these extraneous solutions. Very, very, very important that you check. And I can tell you right now, if you do not check on, you know, uh, check all your answers, like when you're solving like a rational equation or whatnot, you're going to get things wrong and your teacher will take points off. So my whole, you know, goal with all my videos that I make is to try to, you know, not one, but my main goal is to teach you mathematics, but two, really give you good advice, especially if you're a student, so you can, you know, max out and get those nice A pluses on your test and quizzes. Now, you know, you really should heed my advice, okay? One, you know, yes, I know math, but that's not why you should listen to me, okay? Uh, more importantly, I've been teaching math for decades with actual teachers. I've given out tens of thousands of grades through the years, right? So I know how to grade. I know how teachers, math teachers think. So if you follow my advice, you are going to do very, very uh, well in mathematics. Again, if you need help with uh, rational equations, uh, extraneous solutions, etc., I have additional videos on my YouTube channel, but I would kind of direct you towards like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course for additional full instruction on this topic. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.